recorded on this computer. All right, so flowable fill has been called a lot of different things. Lean mixed backfill, um, um, CLSM, like you can see here. Um, there are lots of different things. Uh, what ACI refers to it as is controlled low strength materials. In essence, what it is, is it's a soil that you design um, that's really flowable and it hardens. Um, so it's like a very, very flowable liquid. Um, acts kind of like a soil, in, in essence, whenever it becomes hard. It's not concrete, but it has cement in it or fly ash. It acts a lot like concrete. Uh, but it's just kind of a controlled product that in the ready mix industry, people will, will order. Um, and this product's gonna be less than 12,000 PSI or 1200 PSI. So kind of kind of need to recognize that. So lower the 12,000, 1200 PSI compressive strengths. And I mean, it's kind of like a liquid, like you can see here, um, you know, it's just, it just flows. It is, you know, like looks a lot like cement and water mixed together and you have a whole concrete ready mix truck of it. So um, CLSM or I always just call it flowable fill. I don't like to use the acro use that acronym. Um, it's really a self compacted fluid like material that can be used in you know lieu of conventional backfill so it's a little bit more expensive but it you can actually it's more predictable you can actually t have more testing results so in essence if you have um you know if you have some type of awkward area where you need to make sure that everything's going to get filled in just right you don't want to have any weird settlement issues later you can come in with a backfill and you can just pour uh, flowable fill behind it and um, you know and be just fine and depending on you know uh, you know the strength of it you can excavate it later so you can back so back fills really whenever you're dealing with something that you can actually take like a front end low or a back a backhoe or excavator and you can actually uh, take this material back out later if you needed to um, that the, you know um, that uh, can be usually, you know, 30 PSI, 50 PSI, 100 PSI, something like that. People will uh, design for flowable fill. For structural fill, that's where you actually get in a much higher where you can't really excavate it. You're not, you don't want to uh, use a, you don't really want to remove it later. Um, and so there's kind of, there's kind of the two basic applications. Um, probably the probably the most you commonly use is around utility trenches and lines. Um, but there's a lot of different, you can use them around a lot of different things though. So for example, with utility lines, maybe you have to put a new utility line in the pipe and it's above, above uh, where you dug at. And just so happens there's a bunch of random holes and you don't want any holes in there because that's going to make the, the soil weak around it and create more tension around that pipe. So you say, okay, well, I need to put something around that pipe. It needs to be very flowable. So you go in and you use some flowable fill. You pour it around that pipe like you see there. And, um, you know, when you move on down the road. Because soil, you know, it, 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 you know, once you pour it in there, you have to actually, like, move it and, and so it's kind of hard to get around that pipe all the way with that if it was just soil. But with what's like, you know, fluid like this, it can actually move around it like water. So um, that's really the, the biggest benefit about flowable fill is you, it's just, you know, you can design it. Um, so you can kind of know the properties and test it. And then uh, you can, uh, it acts kind of like water. So you kind of look at different uh, setting times and strengths. And you know you can figure out okay so if, how well it's going to be excavated later. Um, you can kind of design for all that. So I'll have some slides about that. We'll go through it really quickly. I just kind of wanted to kind of give you a highlight because I know whenever I went out 
in the industry and was like, man, I know a lot about concrete. And then people uh, were, were asking me to design flowable fill mixes and troubleshoot some flowable fill stuff. And I said, what in the world is this? Um, and so this is kind of what specialty type concrete week's all about for us. Um, so when we talk about flowability, um, you know, if your slump's greater than eight inches, a lot of times you're going to use, um, you're going to measure, you know, you might measure the spread. Um, you might just go and look at it, see how well it, it mixes. I mean, but you can use a slump cone. You can use the flow cone. You can use a modified uh, flow test. A lot of different, different ways. I mean, the key is how well do you want it to, to flow? And most of the time, um, especially with your weaker mixes, you're going to have so much water in there that it's not a big deal. It's so whenever you get to your higher strength mixes or you're using a bunch of sand, um, that when things come a little bit more of a, you really need to look at your flowability. So when you're using a lot of sand or you're really trying to get more strength out of it, that's kind of when, the, when this kind of plays into there. Um, hardening time, if you start to use a bunch of water, uh, a lot of times you're gonna have a lot more delayed hardening so uh, you just kind of, you know, want to kind of recognize it. So, you know, it can harden just like normal concrete, you know, maybe take an hour to three hours, but typically the next day is, uh, is uh, it'll be hard and everything. So, but, and then you can go out and you can do run compressor strengths like normal, so. Um, very, very common. One thing that I will say with with uh, flowable fill is it'll actually shrink because of the water in it. So sometimes it gets evaporated too and, and just you just have, you know, shrinkage from it all. And so you will see some shrinkage uh, depending on how your mix is designed. As it obviously gets more and more of like a structural uh, flowable fill, it won't shrink as much. But if you have just mainly large, large, large amounts of water in it, um, you're, you're gonna see some shrinkage. So it's just kind of a given. And you may even see some cracking. It's not the end of the world if it does crack. Um, I mean, obviously it will mess a little bit with your permeability, but for the most part, that's not what people are focused on because you're gonna put something on top of there. You may put um, you know, concrete on top of there. There's a lot of different things you can do. Um, but a lot of times the cracks, especially, especially for how thick of a, of a structure it is, a lot of times those cracks aren't that big of a deal. So for typical mixture proportions, you may only have like 50 pounds of cement. I actually designed one time a flowable fill. It was just class C fly ash because it worked really well. And I think I used no cement and about 300 pounds of fly ash and it worked just fine so but you don't have any you know coarse rock or anything in this you really don't have admixtures normally you may pump it up full of air though because airs you know air entrainment's really cheap um a lot cheaper than sand a lot cheaper than fly ash so um you know you may have 12 1200 uh 2,700 pounds of sand is, pr is pretty common. Um, and you have obviously like twice as much water in it as normal, so. So this is, this is a, a common mix I've used quite a few times. Um, and these are some of the results I've gotten where people needed strengths at, set, at uh, 7, tw uh, 28, and 56 days. And so they were able to get, you know, in seven days, 50 PSI, and at a, a 56 days, 105. Um, you know, in 60, at, this should be 28, not 20. So that was kind of, you know, the strengths. The unit weights, uh, instead of being 140, 150 pounds per cubic foot, it's at 102, 103 pounds. Your air contents like 31% because I pumped it up full of air entrainment. 
Um, and it had a, you know, a flow value of about eight inches. So, I mean, it flowed really well for what they're doing. Whenever we actually need to use a backhoe and excavate this later, um, you know, the, the important thing is to realize that, it, it, you know, it needs to be low strength. So you don't need to have, uh, you know, you start getting over 100, 200 PSI, you're, you're, you're going to have to work a lot harder. So you can't use just a shovel, um, you know, if it's, if, it's a, if it's really over about 50, 60 PSI, you're going to start, it's going to be difficult to, to shovel. Um, with an excavator, with a back, with a backhoe, a lot of times 300 psi or greater, it's going to really struggle. So, um, if you go over 300 psi, um, so whenever here's a couple of things about precautions. Um, you know, your your form work, design work. However, you're going to pour that flowable fill in there. You just need to make sure you realize it's kind of like water. So if there's any random holes or if you can get in between any cracks, it will, which is good and bad. So, I mean, sometimes with form work, it don't work too well. So with soils, you know, it works pretty well. Um, it's a, it, you know, it does a pretty good job of securing tanks and stuff if you uh, have an underground tank that you're looking, looking to keep... Uh, together. Um, if people are actually trying to be competitive with uh, with flowable fill, you're going to be specific on jobs. So people a lot of times will just have a, oh yeah, I need it for this or I need it for that on an application for a contractor. So um, ready mix producers, how they get competitive is they're going to target specific jobs. They're going to closely review those design requirements. And they're going to find the cheapest thing they possibly can to make to make it work for for what they're doing. Um, and so you really want to obviously have very little cement in there. And sometimes I've seen people will use washout water, recycled you know materials, because they're they're just looking for really cheap stuff. Um, but you, but you still got to go and do a little bit of testing probably to make sure everything's going to come out right. Um, so again, the advantages of using flowable fill, um, you know, there's a lot more, um, you know, there's a lot of different, a lot of different things we can talk about. Um, it really just for your application, it's a dependable product that you can design and it, and it flows really well around hard to reach places that's that, that aren't, you know, that soil can't. All right. 